YouTube, what is up? So I saw a comment, somebody wanted to know more about my touch probe I built, and uh, this video is gonna be all about that. So let's just start off, what is a touch probe? Well, think of it, nothing more than a switch, a normally closed switch. It's either on or it's off. And what happens when an object that you're trying to index is touched by the probe, it breaks contact with a circuit inside here, which breaks voltage, current flow through these wires, and you're able to pick that up with your controller. And in order to be accurate, you need to know where this Ruby stylus, the exact center of that sphere, is in relation to the center of the shank. This is exactly three quarters of an inch, size of my R8 collet. This point, needs to be adjustable in order to make sure that this is exactly coaxial to the spindle center line. And that's done with these three adjustment set screws. In here, there's a plate that you can think of it like a tilter whirl. If you adjust some of those screws, you're able to tilt that plate inside, which in essence is gonna move your ruby tip. So let's break it down and take a look inside of exactly what's going on. Now this was a prototype, so I did use 6061 aluminum for the entire construction. And you, you see from the use, the shank's starting to get torn up a little bit, but it hasn't lost accuracy. I'm able to pull a thou, no problem, repeatability, which um, I just have a simple GO704 and that uh, the machine itself can't cut better tolerance than that. So for my application, this is fine. Um, so let's pull it apart. This is precisely the reason why you don't want to lose, yeah, why you don't want to use aluminum. The shaft inset, the set screws have deformed the aluminum inside, creating little dimples. And that makes it almost impossible to get this out because now it's basically forge fitted um, into those holes. So it's, it's, it's gonna take some effort here. There we go. Still unsuccessful getting the top off, but here is the internals. Again, this is the base. These were the set screws underneath that are able to push up at the center of these balls to tilt and adjust the center of our touch probe. And this setup uh, was like the original Renishaw probe, the patent I, I believe has run out. And the dude that thought of this is a genius because like normal uh, four-legged things, if you have a stool with four legs, right? And the stool could still be stable with three and you always got that one loose wobbly leg. But if you just had three, well, if you take one out, any one of them, the stool is going to collapse. In other words, when this three-legged device, see it, or just like a normal tripod, is placed on the ground, it can only go down on the ground in one specific location. So just like this, it doesn't matter where this is set, these rods are only going to index in between those two balls in one location, no matter what. Doesn't matter where this is. When this comes back down and it seats between the balls, there's only one contact point on each side of the rod. And if any one of those contact points is broken, say by something touching the probe tip, right? This way or that way or this way, the back one's raising. Now this one's raising, or some, both of them raise, something inside. So that's what allows this probe to pick up touches from either direction. 
which for this design is kind of a bad thing. As we'll see in another video, I'm gonna go into detail about some errors that a lot of people overlook when using these probes. Um, is the amount of force it takes to activate the probe in this direction versus this direction versus this direction versus in between, say like this direction, where it's battling, does this one need to lift up or this one? The amount of force and travel distance changes. And in other words, the trigger, the distance needed to move this probe tip you know, in the thousands of an inch differs depending on the angle of attack. And that throws off your indexing or whatever part you're trying to find. Because if you're trying to find this corner and you probe in two different 90 degree directions, well, the probe takes more movement in the Y than the X to activate. So you're going to be off in the Y. Um, now, very small, but it is there and it is correctable because it's repeatable, just like we just saw with this three-legged system. So that's that. This was constructed. You can buy this. I think I bought this from Renishaw. Actual probe tip, which is threaded into this arbor that I made out of Delrin. Screwed in with a quarter 20 bolt on the lathe, chopped off for a flat indexing point. That way, the body here, you see I have another ball with a piston. That's actually a spring-loaded cylinder that pushes down on this which pushes down on the balls to keep contact, uh, which ultimately adds resistance to the probe. And all that's shoved up in there. The way the circuit works is because when this lifts up, it breaks circuit, that's your switch. Right now, current's flowing. If you touch something, current's not flowing. Current flowing, current's not flowing. Only if there's, if there's juice to these balls. And the juice is getting to the balls. I have this circuit board in here uh, with these push pins. It's hard to see without the light. That push down on the probe balls. And these are the forks that apply pressure and juice to the ball, so this is wired up so that ground is here and positive five volts is here. It runs all the way around the circle, then back out. So if any one of these pairs breaks, they're in series, it's gonna cut and trigger the probe. So yeah, I'm really struggling to get this apart, so I can't show you the inside. Um, definitely, I'll release another video here of the design of the new probe. I got a couple cool things I want to incorporate. One being, um, I've crashed this thing so many times and wrecked a lot of these probe tips. So some way that you could set a maximum amount of travel and incorporate another switch that's wired to the e-stop. Therefore, if you, tend, if you probe and for some reason, the, your machine controller doesn't pick up the probe tip touch and it just keeps on walloping. Well, when it hits that second switch, it has no choice but to kill the entire machine. Um, or potentially wire that into the stop function of Mach 3 or Linux CNC. So, yeah, hopefully that was helpful.